Hello, welcome back to Shit They Don't Tell You. I'm Nikki Limo, and I'm here with, who, who are you today? Steve Green. Steve Green Comedy. Hi. Or Steve Green Com, depending on what social media platform you're on. True. All over the place All with that branding. <laughs> over the place with that branding. Um, today, I thought we'd talk about some shit they don't tell you about being a people pleaser and how to say no. What is a people pleaser? Okay, so I'm glad you asked because I feel like this is some shit that I struggled with for most of my life. Have you ever felt like you're a people pleaser? No. No, I didn't think so. Um, and it's not a good, I mean. Not that I'm an asshole, but. I know. No, it's actually very healthy to not be a people pleaser. Yeah. So it's a good thing that you aren't. I will say conversationally, I can do, I can be very. Um, you cater to the. We yeah, cater to who I'm talking to because I think that that's, that's a good host. Yeah, I think that's just being a good listener. Yeah, good listener, yeah. good host, good good um, person. Yeah, I wouldn't uh-huh. count that as being a people pleaser. All right, cool. Um, being a people pleaser is like you, you basically dismiss your own boundaries in order to cater to others. So. You are always there to say yes to favors that they're asking you. Um, You are constantly putting aside your own projects and and things that you're working on in order to help people with the things that they're working on. And you do it to your detriment. Mm -hmm. And for me, psychologically, it was because I really hate disappointing people. Like that's honestly, it makes me feel like mush inside when I feel like I'm going to disappoint somebody. And I'd rather avoid that at all costs, even if it's at the detriment to my own mental health and well-being. Yes. Yeah. I've seen that. Right. And I, of course, like everything, it probably stems from childhood. I don't know, but- God uh, knows where too. They, we flip so many switches in, during childhood, you don't know which buttons you push. Right. Well, I mean, like there's a certain peacemaker aspect to- it all where I just want everyone to get along and I want, you know, I want everybody to feel their best. And like, if I can cater to somebody and then it makes them feel their best, then like, why wouldn't I do that for them? Right. You know, or like if I'm feeling good about myself, but then someone else is having, is not feeling good about themselves. It's not my responsibility, but I feel like it is like, I feel like, oh no, like I need to make them feel better or make them happy. Right. I don't know. It can get very destructive. So um, if you are wondering if you're a people pleaser, I actually, there's a quiz in here. Um, this book is The Art of Saying No by Damon Zahariades. I, Nailed I, it. Good advertisement. I don't know how to say his last name. I've actually never heard of this book. It pops up on Am- Amazon Recommends, and I was like, that sounds interesting. Like, I have, I've had trouble setting boundaries in the past. I'd read this book. Um, I would say that it's it's got some conflicting information in it so overall i i rated a three out of five sorry damn Damon. you heard that damien <laughs> zaharias <laughs> but there's some good there's some good um takeaways like this quiz where you can that you could actually see how bad your people pleasing is or how bad you are at setting boundaries and saying no how so, bad are you all right well, we're gonna find out right now all right you ready it. yes i'm excited okay so I love quizzes we're gonna. I'm gonna read off 15 statements. Okay. So you playing at home right now? If you've got a pen and paper, you can keep track of what your answers are. Yeah. But you're gonna write down a one if the statement is completely false, okay. as it applies to you, and then a write down a five if the statement describes you to a T. I'm trying to at the end of this be me, right? I'm not trying to be Han Solo. Yeah, you're, you're trying to just be me, okay. you. Yeah. Well, I'm you're trying to be very be very honest. Okay. Yeah, yeah. With where you fall on the scale. Okay. So if a statement is somewhat accurate, you can assign values two, three, or four to indicate the extent to which it's accurate. You got it. Right? Okay. I'm gonna write down your I'm gonna write down your Please. values. So just a four to, is we'll strongly and then the one is not. A uh, five is the strongest. Five is strong. Yeah. And then four is med- is like medium strong. And then zero is no no dice. Three's in the middle. There's no zero. That's just one to it's just one to five. One to five. Okay. Yeah. You got it? I always gotta check. <laughs> always gotta check. You want me to say it again? Well, I'm a very you know me. I'm all in, I'm not in. Yeah. So I'm going to be ones and fives probably the whole time. Okay. Okay, cool. Probably. Okay, so once we've assigned the values, then I'll, t- I'll read off how much you are. Okay. So number one, I never speak my mind even when I have strong feelings about something. <laughs> yeah. One. Yeah. That doesn't relate to you at all. All right. I always feel the need to smile and be overly nice to people even when I'm feeling grumpy. One. <laughs> you don't have to be extremes too, like if you want. No, I, I know. Okay. But so far. Number three. The possibility of conflict terrifies me. 
one. I like conflict. I hate conflict. This one, oh. I'd be a strong five. Oh. I really just, as much as I can to avoid it, I will. Like, yeah. I, I want just, I mean, I feel like I try to be more assertive lately, but I don't know. We'll get into it. Um, I like to jump in the mix. But I just, I just would rather there be no conflict. <laughs> um, okay. I immediately feel selfish when I do something for myself. Yes. Ooh. Very strongly. Yeah. Five. Okay. Five, I regularly allow friends, coworkers, family members, and even strangers to violate my personal boundaries. One. How about you on all this? Oh, you already took it. I actually didn't take it yet, but um, I, I feel like I know kind of where I fall. And also, you know, depending on when you answer these questions, you can fall in different places, obviously, okay. as you evolve and like start setting more boundaries and stuff. I just want to know where your, what your score is. All right, I'll put mine down too. Okay. I never speak my mind even when I have strong feelings about something. I say... I'm a, a three. Okay. Um, I always feel the need to smile and be overly nice to people even when I'm feeling grumpy. Yeah, that's probably a strong. Well, I say four because I make exceptions. If you're my friend, then I feel like I just be my whole self around you. Yeah. But if you're like a stranger or an acquaintance, I feel like I do need to be smiling. You know what? That's pretty true. I, I, would, I, don't, I don't dump my feelings on just anybody. Yeah. Or like really, really or my mood really. Uh-huh. I, I, like to be, I like to be a little more. Um, polite. Yeah, polite. Yeah. So I'll, I would adjust my score. On okay. That. So would you adjust? I it would to do it? like a three. Three. Okay. Okay. Uh, the possibility of conflict terrifies me. I'd say I'm a strong five on that. Um, I immediately feel selfish when I do something for myself. I've got this one. I've gotten better at. So this one, I used to be a five, and I feel like I'm now down to a two. Wow. Yeah. I really like worked on self-care for the past year that's really good yeah uh okay i regularly allow my friends coworkers, family members even strangers to violate my personal boundaries i'd say one i don't i yeah, really I don't, don't really do that anymore um okay so number six i always try to be the person others want me to be yeah I, I do that yeah so you're a five yeah but i think that that's me too though you know i'm just myself and i think that when people meet me they want me to be that guy but i am that guy Friends, coworkers, family members, and strangers. Wait, no, hold on. That was the last one. I always try to be the person others want me to be. I think it's others talking about me. bending your personality oh. to fit their. Like, I really what, don't do that. No. Yeah, I don't yeah, think you one. do that. I'm, one. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say two. I feel like I act differently around different groups of people, and not necessarily. It's not, not necessarily a, a bad fake thing. Fake way. It's energy matching. Yeah, though. It's, you, exactly. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. Which I, it, just, it works for you. And I feel like I have different inside jokes with like different people and it's a different type of humor. It lets you play a little more. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's fun. All right. Number seven, I regularly sacrifice my emotional happiness to make sure other people are happy. Mm. Oh, yeah. I think I do that. Yeah, I think so. I think I do that. I'll, I'll be a four on that one. Four. I... I've gotten way better at that. I think I'm four too. Because besides you, where I just am like, get to be emotionally free, I feel like I put it aside if I have to get shit done for a group. You do. Yeah. You do. But you've gotten a little bit better about it too, I think. Yeah. That's why we're, we're not fives, we're fours. We're okay, fours, folks. okay? We're a solid fours. Number eight, I'm fearful of others' negative emotions towards me. I'd say, I'd say I'm a five. I'd say I'm a two. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes maybe it I'm a me. four. When people say I fake my pranks, I got fucking go ballistic. <laughs> so I, that's why I got to be a two. I can't be a one. I desperately want to be liked by others. I'm a one. I think everybody has a degree of like. Okay, I'll be, be a two. Okay. I, I'm just being honest. I don't really. If, yeah. Unless you're my friend or whatever. Yeah. That's different. Or like if if people from the shit they don't tell you audience was like, yo, Steve, blah, blah, blah. I would be like, oh, shit. Because they know yeah. me. You know what right. I mean? Right. Like, if when someone knows you. They know me. Is disappointed by you. Otherwise, yeah. I don't care. That's why I feel like there's a lot of blurred lines here. Because like, yeah, I think there's exceptions. Yeah. Um, I desperately want to be liked by others. I, yeah, I think not at the sacrifice of who I am. So I, I don't know. I'd put like a three for me because I do want to be liked by others. And that's not bad. Yeah. That's not a bad thing. Everyone wants to be liked to some degree. I just want to be liked by the right people. Right, right. You know. Yeah, and I think you're more selective than I am. Yeah. Um, and I have different boundaries than you do. Like yeah. for me, like 
it just takes a little more to reach me because I already have the group of people that can reach me. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So yeah, this first part is just determining where you are now. And then I'm going to go over like how to set boundaries. And yeah. Improve. And it's not about being a badass, by the way. No, no, no. It's just, it's not just at all. about honestly. And everyone's got a different scale. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Exactly. And so those of you out there who are like, I'm a five, that's not because you're a little bitch or whatever. <laughs> you might be a little bitch. But you might be a little bitch. And it's time to analyze that. You be a little self aware, you know? Yeah. Uh, number 10, I avoid taking initiative. Ooh. Uh, on what? Anything. Anything? No, I definitely don't avoid that. I'd say I'm a four. Well, that's... Oh, I mean, no, a two. A two. two, okay. I'd say I'm a one. I think I take initiative on pretty much everything. You do? Yeah. Uh, number 11, rejection frightens me. Yeah, for sure. I'm a, I'm a four. Four? Yeah. I think I'm a two. I think I got rejected so much yeah. in my life that it's not even scary anymore. It's not scary, but it just it's still something that I think about. I think it almost hurts me to not be scared of it anymore because I kind of expect to be rejected. And then if I get approved, <laughs> then I'm like, oh, shit, tight. I think for me, the more things that I've done mm -hmm. and like the more movies I made or whatever successes that I've had, mm -hmm. the more I'm scared of the next one getting rejected. Does that make sense? Oh, I see. Like, so, so I, you set a higher bar for yourself yeah, 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 and yeah, then yeah, you're yeah. scared of people not liking the new. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's common and with And that's not artists. even about right people, wrong people. That's just like when you put something out there yeah. and it be and it gets rejected, that sucks. So yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I put it too because I feel like there's exceptions. Like if I pour my heart into something. Yeah. It's a lot more vulnerable than on like, you know, regular things. Like I feel like I've gone on so many auditions that I didn't book or like, you know, right. so many I've gotten rejected so much that I just I I don't really get scared of it. Um I would say that I would a uh, two if I had already uploaded a YouTube video by now, but I still haven't. You know what I'm saying? So I'm right, still right. I'm still in this weird zone of like Totally. Yeah. And that's okay. Like you could it can change. Yeah. Yeah. Um, number 12, I overanalyze every decision concerned with how my decisions will cause others to react. I overanalyze every decision. Concerned with how, how, how my will decisions react. will cause others to react. I do that, three. I think I'm a five on three. that. I think I get analysis paralysis sometimes. I think that I worry about how something that I do affecting you. Right. That's my my main thing. Yes, yeah, so yours is only just exceptions. Yeah, I don't to wanna I don't wanna put you in a bad spot. Yeah, I feel like I I do it to the highest degree where I just am over overanalyzing. Yeah. Well it says every decision. It's not every decision. It's really just like when Certain. it comes to career and yes. creativity. So maybe I'm a four. And even just the shit that I say because I troll a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't want my trolling to get you in trouble. Oh yeah, like, like there's a couple times where it could have. Sure, because I see some dangerous. shit that I don't even think sometimes uh -huh. too, but I'm just trolling. But then if people really think that's real, oh, then it reflects oh, on you. Oh, you're talking about that, yeah. Uh, yeah or like, I was talking about your trolls where oh, you were yeah, going to be in a dangerous situation. Well, that too, yeah, yeah. That too. But then, you know, also, you know, yeah, I just don't want to put you in a bad spot. I get it. Number 13, I soar emotionally when I receive positive feedback and crumble into despair when I receive negative feedback. I'm a, I'm a one on that because I, either way I feel uncomfortable. True. I think I'm a four because I do really like positive feedback. Um, but yeah, sometimes the negative feedback I want to defend and then I, then I can't defend it or, or you know, like I feel like, yeah. Maybe I'm a two because only because, um, you know, when Funny Story was getting all these killer reviews and stuff, it felt really good. Yeah, yeah. Because it was from, like, people who are in the industry and, like, you know. Like, yeah, I like, think it depends on what it project depends. it is, too. If it's a YouTube video, I don't give a fuck. Right, you right. I mean? Yeah. Or if it's, like a, a, like, a basic YouTube video. If it's something that I put, like, lots of time and energy into. That, exactly. Yeah. Just a basic-ass thing, it's different. Yeah. But getting acclaim from your quote-unquote peers. Yeah, you know, it, does, very, it, it, it feels It gets good. your nipples hard a little bit. Very hard. Very erect nipples mm -hmm. happen. Pouty nipples. What was that? They they pouty. Pouty. Very pouty. I've never heard nipples described that way. Well, I'm convinced everybody is good, even if an individual is abusive and emotionally manipulative towards me. One. Yeah, one. I think. Um, 
I used to be a little bit more towards the five because I didn't, I hadn't interacted with enough abusive personalities. Right. So, you know, it's not always so obvious when someone's an abusive personality. A lot of times there are these, they come off as nice people. And then when they get you in their, in their grips, mm -hmm. that's when they start to be abusive and emotionally manipulative. Dude, I straight up think that everyone's born um, uh, good. Yeah. And then I think the gravitational forces of our universe and society bend you in all different directions and challenge you, and then you become who you're going to be. Totally. Wow, you got really ph philosophical there. Thank you very much. Philosophical Steve. Thank you. I try to. Okay, number 15. That's the last one. Saying no fills me with an immediate sense of dread. Saying no? Yeah, saying no. Oh, interesting. Um, if someone needs help, then yeah. So five? I'd say, I'd say I'm a five for that, yeah. Somebody needs help. If somebody's like, you know, not needing help, they're grifting or some shit, it's mm -hmm. different. I'd say two. I think saying no becomes addictive sometimes. If you are if you were a people pleaser and you're so used to saying no, yes. Right. Uh, after a while, I, I start to like get more comfortable saying no. And then I'm like, ooh, I'm saying no to this and this and this and this. <laughs> True. Yeah. I think it's true. I'm really just thinking of my friends. People that need help. Yeah, because like we have a couple of our friends who ask me for help all the time with boy troubles and stuff. Right. And I would never reject them ever. And the idea of doing that terrifies me. Oh, Like okay. letting them down. Yeah. So maybe you're a four? Yeah, I'll be a four. Yeah, because I, I, I'm just thinking more about people approaching with projects. And oh, no, that's easy. Stuff like that. That's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these people that are people pleasers, like anything saying no. Okay, I'll be a three on that. I'll be a three. Okay. Three. Okay, so time to tally our scores. If you need to pause, to use your little calculator to do it. Go ahead and do that now. Tabulate. All right, so I have tabulated our scores, and Steve, you came in with a whopping 35. Oh, I man. came in with a 43. Okay. But we are both in the same category, which okay. is the second tier, which is 31 to 45 points. You sometimes feel conflicted when pursuing your personal and or professional goals, knowing that you could be helping others realize theirs. Saying no isn't a major problem for you, and you often decline requests out of necessity. Nevertheless, you say yes more often than you'd like. I think that's pretty fair. That's pretty fair. Yeah. That's a good analysis. And for those of you that are listening at home, I'm going to read all the categories for you. So the 15 to 30 points, you have little difficulty saying no. You make judicious decisions regarding how to use your time and other resources and remain resolute when others disparage those decisions. Meeting your obligations, addressing your responsibilities, and caring for your own happiness have a higher priority than pleasing people. Good for you. Wow. wow. Brag about Good it. Good for fucking Brag about you. It. All right. The next tier above uh, ours was 46 to 60 points. You're driven to please people even if you're not consciously aware of it. Uh -huh. You're highly adverse to conflict and go to great lengths to avoid it. When confronted with another's anger, irritation, distress, or displeasure, you immediately drop what you're doing to rescue that person. Rescuing him or her usually entails surrendering to the individual's requests. You're a cat lady. And, oh, I don't know. Cat ladies are pretty like, nah, I'm just going to be with my cats. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I was thinking the other I think one. this yeah. person's like, um, like, you know that nice guy in films? Yes. That like, they're always friend zoned. Of course. But because they're always available and stuff. Yes. All right. So, the last. Paul Rudd character. And lastly, I don't know about that. But Is he not the? No, I don't think so, but we'll move on. <laughs> 61 to 75 points. Everything you do from the moment you wake up is geared towards making other people happy. You rarely consider your own happiness and are willing to set aside your own goals and responsibilities to accommodate others. You maintain no personal boundaries, allowing people to intrude upon you at their whim. The idea of saying no is unimaginable since doing so might negatively affect others. You are, in effect, you are in effect, a chronic people pleaser. Hey, mom, are you listening? That's you. Aw. Yeah, that's my mom. I love your mom. I know, I love her too. Yeah, I get it. But she it, got to go first though sometime, Ma. It's over time. It's like it's it's like if you imagine yourself as a as a pie and you're just constantly allowing people to take pieces and pieces and yeah. pieces of you, then there's nothing to feed yourself after. Yes, but the the act of people taking pieces from you is what gives them gratification, which is they feel needed. And I think that that's the the pie, you, you as the pie feel like yeah. you're, oh, you're like a giving tree. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like what, at the end? I think it's like that. Giving tree dies. <laughs> Spoilers. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry if you haven't read The Giving Tree. Don't listen to that part, Mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Giving Tree gives so much that it dies. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Sad. Sad book. You're a sick person, Nikki <laughs> Why am I sick? You're fucking sick. I'm not sick. All right. All right. Getting so. off to the Giving Tree dying, I think, is pretty up there. <laughs> Laughing at it? Yeah. That's a sad book, man. You're I'm fucking... not laughing at the giving tree dying. Did you dying. laugh at the end of, of Mice and Men too? I didn't read that book. Fucking put you in a fucking laughing fit? No, I am laughing because that's a kid's book. And it's fucking dr- it's Dude, kid dark. shit's dark, man. It's dark. I used to watch Bugs Bunny. Yeah. And the best cartoon I ever saw for that was Rabbit Season Duck Season episode with, with Daffy getting his fucking face blown off with a shotgun the whole time. That happened like every episode. It was every episode. It was a fantastic show. It's dark. Dark stuff, if you want to really sit there and think about it. It is dark. It would be dark if Daffy actually died. Well, Daffy was, I think, the most suicidal of the uh, Mary Melody's characters. Really? Yeah. Daffy's fucking dark. I love Daffy. He was sarcastic, dark. Everything. I love Daffy, too. He yeah, was my he was favorite. My favorite. I also liked Wile E. Coyote, and I would get pissed that that stupid cocky Roadrunner would always win. I love Wile E. Coyote. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I he's like, an underdog. He, dude, this guy spends so much money on his passion. <laughs> he's constantly buying Acme products. Dude, and it, the best thing is that they always cut to him, and he just spent probably days setting this thing yeah. up. Yeah. Days. He's got a lot of stamina. Yeah, and that fucking Roadrunner just just wrecks him <laughs> yeah. every time even when he thinks he got the roadrunner roadrunner always gets to be like nah nah after and get away and i'm like that's just not fuck you roadrunner by the way wiley coyote is is pretty dark too he's fucking starving in the desert i know he's got a fucking bib on that's what i'm saying he's always trying to fucking eat the roadrunner i love how he he constantly walks off cliffs and it's fine until he looks down <laughs> Yeah, and then he looks at the camera, and then he holds up a sign. Like, yeah, yikes! <laughs> like where he get the sign? I don't he's, know. It's great. He's out there making signs just in he, case he ever so falls prepared. off a cliff. He is so prepared, yeah. studious. Uh, manages his money properly, I guess, Obviously. because he's able to. Buy he, he did so well much. for himself. <laughs> yeah. How come he can get all this Acme shit sent to him, but not food? <laughs> right. <laughs> he should get a drop shipping company. Also, what does the Roadrunner eat? Tell me about it. And the Roadrunner always has all that energy. I don't know. We're haters of the Roadrunner. Yeah, dude. I never liked that Roadrunner. So I want to get into now if you've figured out your type and if how much of a people pleaser, pleaser you are on that scale. How do you then set boundaries so that you can be a people pleaser less or you can say no more or you can protect your own energy? Yeah. How do you do that? I will get to that. After this oh, break. good job. Oh, cliffhanger. Oh, I love it. Wiley Coyote. What's going to happen next? That's what we did to you. What's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? All right, we just want to give a shout out to our sponsor today, Harry. So, what's up? So, I get ingrown hairs in my face. I know. And the only thing that has ever worked for me is if I use fresh razor blades constantly. And Harry's makes that possible because it was never affordable to do that before. Yeah. So I use, I now use a razor blade like mm, two or three times and then I scrap it for a new blade. But that used to be like sometimes like a $15 decision. Yeah. Which now it is not but thanks to Harry's. But it's not anymore That's because what I'm saying. Harry's offers uh, really quality durable blades at a really nice price of they sharp. $2 per blade. Exactly. Get that. No spending dollar dollar bills, no, y'all. No, spend them somewhere else. Get spend your, it on something nice for yourself. Get your doll hair with your savings. Get your doll hair doll hairs. Exactly. Out of your face. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I like having a fresh blade because uh, it really has made the biggest difference. Because I haven't how, have I complained to you lately about no, it? No, not yeah, at all. Exactly because I use the fresh blades, man. Yeah, your hair grows in nice, and then you get it shaved smooth. Exactly. Which is awesome. Yes. That's the strategy now. So Harry's is offering a trial set delivered to your doorstep by going to harrys.com slash stdty. It's super convenient because you get blade refills that are delivered directly to your door on your schedule with or without a subscription. You don't even have to be subscribed. It's like it's your choice. But, but it makes it really easy I if you do. I think it makes it a lot easier if yeah. you do. You don't even want to think about it anymore. Uh, and the reason they're able to offer it at such a low price is because they cut out the middleman. So they've been manufacturing blades uh, in their German blade factory mm -hmm. that's been honing precision blades for a century. Hello. They can make swords in there if they wanted to. 
but they are making things that we can actually use. Actually useful things. We stand. So listeners of our show can redeem their Harry's trial set at harrys.com slash stdty. You'll get weighted ergonomic handle for a firm grip, a five blade razor with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel with aloe to keep your skin hydrated, and a travel blade cover to keep your razor dry and easy to grab on the go. And I know we're not traveling a lot right now, <laughs> but it actually, you can use this at home and it keeps your stuff safe. Exactly. So, so go to harrys.com slash stdty to start shaving better today. Do it. Do it. All right, and we're back from our cliffhanger, and I know everybody's very one. curious. I'm on the edge. So what do you do to set boundaries? Okay, so the first step to setting boundaries, new boundaries, and this is like, especially if you took that quiz and you were like, wow, I'm like really a people pleaser. How do I how do I even start to set boundaries? Yes. I've dug myself so deep. Everyone already treats me this way. Everyone expects all these things from me already. How do I get myself out of it? So the first thing you need to do is decide. Decide what your boundaries are. And this is gonna take like, take a day, take like some time with this one, meditate, do whatever you need to do to like get centered and really like think about it with no distractions. Just like think about, listen to your gut and listen to like times that you've said yes to things that made you uncomfortable. What about it made you uncomfortable? Where would you prefer to change that in an ideal setting? How would you like people to treat you? How uh, how have you been letting them treat you that you don't, no longer wish to be treated? What do you feel like your value is? Um, and really like think about that too, because I know sometimes people pleasers like to dismiss their own value. Like, well, yeah. you know, like they, they actually feel valued by people pleasing yes. like we were talking about yes. before. And so they've dismissed their own value as an independent person, like what they actually bring to the table. So th really think about that. Like you, you do have, you do have value outside of, pleasing others so um think about why those people wanted to be your friend in the first place if it's solely because they wanted you to cater to them then that's not a that's a toxic relationship yes. you know so really examine your current relationships with people and this is going to take a change and these are going to once you've decided on something it's going to take a little bit to develop the habits that can make that a part of your life make that new boundary a part of your life um, really go to your why. Um, and for me, it was that I didn't like being taken advantage of. And then I, I also like the more I people pleased because I wanted people to like me. I wanted to be accepted. I didn't have that many friends before. So like, I just really wanted to be part of a friend group. Um, I, I was willing to have them like me at all at any cost yeah. and that's at a sacrifice to who i was you know that was sacrificing my own values so really establishing like what are your own values and then you change yourself too you change yourself and then um like you get you get taken advantage of and i i feel like for me i no i no longer wanted to be taken advantage of um i also didn't like how i was building resentment not only towards them for continually walking all over me but also towards myself for not setting those boundaries, you know? So I was losing respect for myself. Exactly. And it's a it's a slippery slope. You could go down a really dark hole of if you lose all your respect for yourself. So um, really I needed it to stand on my own two feet and then ultimately um, to be able to stick up for others because how can I stick up for others if I can't even stick up for myself? So thinking of like your why, why you want to change, why you want to set some boundaries, that think of all of those things and really come to a clear decision, like a clear boundary or uh, multiple boundaries, maybe depending on the relationships. Um, and be be careful because sometimes you had a revelation, and it's you're like you're going in there in boundary mode now. And you just start slapping people around. Oh yeah, so there's a difference between, and actually he talks about it in this art of saying no. There's a difference between sometimes when you wake up to that. Yeah. Um, you can just start, you start being throwing aggressive. your weight around. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a difference between being aggressive and assertive. And what you're gonna want to do is be very assertive when it comes to the next step, which is speaking up. Um, once you've decided what your boundaries are and where those boundaries have been crossed in your current relationships. The tough part is going to be you're going to have to speak up. And if you're not used to speaking up, sometimes you do overcompensate like yes. that, especially if resentment has been built up. You want to lash. You might want to lash out or or in anticipation for them getting defensive. 
you're you like overcompensate and you're like, well, this is all my reasons why. And it's like, whoa, yeah. just have a conversation. You're at a restaurant and then they're like, do you want to split some ice cream? And they're like, and you're like, yeah. And they're like, okay, we'll get the chocolate. Like, oh, want the vanilla. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, okay. Okay. It's going to come out in in a weird way, weird ways like that. That's yeah. why you need to have like a, a distinct conversation of setting your new boundaries yes. and a calm conversation. Also, uh, yeah. And to keep it calm, um, separate yourself from their response and know that you're not responsible for their feelings. As long as you're being polite and being clear and being assertive, um, they might. They might throw a fit. Mm-hmm. They might be accepting. They might like completely be like, "Yeah, you know what? You're right. I I should. I'm sorry that I've uh, I asked you for so many favors. You know, like you're right. I'm not like that's being very rude and disrespectful of your time. Um, I'm gonna change that. Or they might be like, "Wow, you're being selfish because that's what a good friend would do is help me with all these favors." Um, you just have to decide, do you feel like you're being selfish for that boundary? Because most likely, if you put all this thought into it, you're probably not being selfish by wanting this this boundary. And sticking up for yourself is not selfish. And if somebody sees it that way, they're probably not a good friend. Exactly. And self-care is not selfish. Exactly. Which is the thing that I felt was holding me back for so long with self-care because I felt like, who am I to deserve this, like, a luxurious hour of putting a face mask on <laughs> like that's like what kind of life oh well, i'm like a fucking princess now oh wow nikki like you think you deserve that wow. and I, I would really put myself down i felt like it was really selfish to not be working every hour of the day that's true. like i i felt like any hour that was taken to gather myself it sounds really ridiculous now because yeah. i've I realized and set boundaries but at that time i was like man you really must not be taking your career seriously if if you are if you think you could just take an hour to like relax yeah. for me a lot of this um was career oriented i know for most people it's probably going to be friendship and relationship oriented for me it was all career it was very like how am i ever going to like succeed or make it if i'm not working constantly and bending over backwards for people that are in charge. Right. And that was that's very harmful to your overall well-being. If you're even if that person can offer you a job, so what? They don't get to walk all over you. Well, it's also informed too by, you know, experiences you've had with your dad and your ex-manager and Yeah, yeah. A lot of those voices were not your own. You know what I'm saying? Totally. Um so for example, there back in the day, this happens to a lot of artists by the way, um people will be like, well, I'm not, I can't pay you, but I'll give you exposure. Like this is going to be huge. Like, first of all, like as an actor, they'd be like, if you act in my project, like it's going to go to this festival and this festival Mm -hmm. and you're going to get so much exposure. And then like, you're going to be able to use that for jobs down the line. So like, you're going to get paid eventually, but like, this is going to help you get massive exposure. And most likely depending on the the project, but usually it doesn't get you that much exposure. And you're really just bending over backwards, working for free, reorganizing your work schedule. On someone else's project. Right, to work for free on someone else's project. And it devalues yourself, but it also devalues the whole space, like the whole industry, the whole profession of acting. And this happens a lot right now currently with influencers because the career influencer, as much as I cringe at that word, is a a new career. It's not, it hasn't been around for very long. And so people don't really know what to charge brands for uh, posting. And it's harmful that people don't talk about it and there isn't an industry standard because Brands severely take advantage of influencers. Mm-hmm. They know that if someone's new, uh, like someone has like this um, blossoming audience that's happening and they're, they're having excited. success, they're excited. They've never had this before. They've never gotten paid for their work, mm-hmm. probably because they didn't even think of it as work. They, they can were tell just, their mom and dad they got a brand deal. They, exactly. A lot of people are like, oh, if I'm associated with this brand, mm-hmm. then it will boost my clout. And brands know that. And they take advantage of that. The amount that if people knew how much brands spend on traditional marketing to reach a fraction of that target audience that that influencer is reaching directly, they would be just over. Flummoxed. Flummoxed. That was the word you're looking for. Yeah, that was exactly the word. They'd be flummoxed. Flummoxed. They would. I was pissed off. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I think that's the word that I was searching for. I was pissed 
when I found out how much, because I was just so thankful that I was getting any compensation for like shouting out their brand in one of my videos. You know what's crazy? Is that people's attention, like your um, <clears throat> your eyeballs being on something actually has a value. And advertisers know that as well. Mm -hmm. But usually the uh, all the amount of money goes to, say, the people in the commercial, the actors, the directors, all that so, stuff. Yeah, the producers. Right. But actually, the the <clears throat> space that they the time slot that they get on the network, the network actually makes the majority of the money. Right, but you yeah. are the product. Right. For them. For influencers. Exactly. In influencer space. Yeah. And, and so, um, there will come a time very soon, I think, where. A lot of those dollars actually end up going to the consumer to pay them for their time for watching commercials, for for mm. actually opening their brain to this stuff. Yeah. Because people are so good now at avoiding ads. Like, dude, if I get if I get ads on my screen pop up, whatever, I don't even look at it. Yeah. I'm so good at fucking like it's like a video game, like getting rid of that shit. Yeah. Mixing it out. They all actually what what you're talking about. They actually do that in app games right now. Currently, if you want to skip to a new level, you can watch three ads. See. And because it's, your attention is worth something, right? And they know that, and so and because they can get it in your brain to buy a certain kind of toilet paper or whatever, and so yeah, it, the day is coming where you're you, the consumer, are actually going to make money on what you pay attention to. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I could see that happening for sure. But um, back to my personal example, it started with me in acting, and then transitioned into like being an influencer. Um, where you don't know how much you're really supposed to get paid and you don't want to step on anyone's toes. You don't want to ask for something that like is unreasonable and you don't want, you don't want to appear like a diva. Mm -hmm. You know, so like all of those things were going through my mind, overanalyzing completely like, am I worth this much? And then I would fight my own case. Like what would someone argue against me being worth that much? Oh, like you've been in two projects oh you have this many followers like you think that you actually deserve that amount of money for blah 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 and so you really have to get strong in your own on your own case mm -hmm. like you if you were fighting in a courtroom again and you were defending yourself as a client and that's really how this change happened is i started treating myself as my own client like how would i negotiate for my client mm -hmm. if i was my client instead of negotiating for me and that's when you're able to see like all the value you bring to the table because you're forced to find all the good points that you're fighting the case for mm -hmm. and um and then you have to speak up you have to say hey here's my value here's my rate and i'm not compromising on that and, and this applies to any job this is not we're not just talking about ad dollars here yeah totally like, this applies to your work whatever you're doing and this applies negotiating if you if you were in a relationship and you're like this is where i stand i will i don't want to do anal i tried <sighs> it one time it hurts yeah and I don't want to do it. With me. I don't care. I have a boundary and it's over my asshole. But what if mine is the one that fits your asshole like a key? Perfectly. I don't, I'm okay with walking away from trying. But thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> and that's how you address wow. it assertively. She did it. And that is how you say no. Yeah. I mean, that is how, you, how I've said no to a lot of things. Because uh, the, more, the more you grow the more opportunities are gonna come your way and most of them are not worth your time if you're really valuing yourself and you have a clear understanding of what your value is. And you have to get good at at being polite and assertively saying no. And part of this also, I, I would like to say, don't create fake excuses. Mm -hmm. Like people can tell when you're lying or when you're being fake. Like if someone's like, hey, can you come to my barbecue this weekend? But you really wanted to do this other project. And so you go, oh, no. You don't think your project is good enough reason to say no. So you say, oh, actually, I'm out of town because my brother or whatever. And then they're like, cool, how about next weekend? Now what are you going to say? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so people, it, you'll end up developing a sense of being untrustworthy rather than just someone that just says what's sending, going on. Sending, yeah, setting yeah. a boundary. Yeah. So don't lie. Say exactly what you feel, what your boundary is. So if someone's like, hey, I really want you to be part of my project. Um, I can only pay you a commission of whatever comes in from the sales of blah, blah. I say, thank you. Thanks for reaching out. Hey, thanks for reaching out. Um, yeah, unfortunately, at this time, I don't work off commissions. I have a standard rate of blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And maybe we can work on something together in the future if yes. things change. Unless 
I have to say, unless, because like a couple years ago you sent me a script and it was really funny and I wanted to do it just because it was funny. Right. Well, that's your own boundary. Yeah. So you have, in your head, you are clear about the exchange of values. And what this really does is open up communication so that your needs are being met and the other person's needs are being met in equal balance. And if you wanted to do a script for free because you thought it was funny, that means it brings value to you. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a converse to that. Exactly. Like, but it's not really converse because it's um, it's still on the what you've determined your value is. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. So whether it's money because maybe that's making up for the fact that it's not that fun of a project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or um, if it's such a fun project that you're totally willing to work for less than your monetary rate because you're compensated by how much fun you're having and and like the maybe the networking opportunities involved like there's people that you've always wanted to work with and you think that you could probably work on other projects with them in the future that and you're you're determining that not them saying hey you'll get exposure and you'll get to work with so and so it's not them saying that it's you being like i want to work with so and so there's also a way to get what you want by not necessarily um saying no either like like there's also a way to do it where like say we're negotiating about your butt again okay and i'm like you know what i'm not even that interested in having sex with you oh you're nagging me well i'm just not that into it actually i'm not that interested and i'm like oh i want it i want it now okay (laughs) see what i just did there yeah separate yourself from their response is being like okay i'm okay with the worst response i'm okay with However, the worst possible imaginary reaction I could get from this Are you person. Ready for it? I'm okay with setting this boundary, and that's their response because I'm not responsible for that response. So if they're like, "Wow, your rate's really high, and you should consider lowering it," like I've I've had this return back to me where it's like, "Wow, like compared to other people we've worked with, that's extremely high," which it's it's not. I know the standard yeah. rate, and I've worked with enough brands, but that's a tactic that they they use sometimes because if you don't know better you're going to be like, oh no, like I set my rate too high yeah. or whatever. And so they say, hey, that's extremely high. You should just consider lowering it. And then they come back a few weeks la- and I go, that's right. okay. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm okay with my rate. And then they come back a few weeks later and they're like, oh, actually we can meet your budget. Yeah, no we, our shit. budget has increased. Or- and also they're always paying somebody else more. Like right, that's the other right. thing. You have to remember that too. Well, yeah, in, in our industry and if you're an influencer listening right now, maybe you just started a blog and you're starting to have some success um, just so you don't get taken advantage of. The way that it works is a brand will give like a middleman company. They'll say, this is our budget. Now you go find us the influencers, right? And so there's these middle companies are who are reaching out to you and their only job is to distribute the budget accurately. So they have big influencers and they have medium and they have small. And they've determined like how much they can pay like a bigger influencer, which is like a bigger a fish. If they can pay all of the other ones less, then they can afford to pay a big person. Like if they can afford a Kim Kardashian, yeah. if they can, if they these other smaller ones say they'll they're willing to sell it for less. Right. And that's where it gets harmful to the industry as a whole because once they know that they can that the, this group of people is willing to settle for lower, then they're going to make that the new standard for that group of yeah, people. Yeah, they all talk to each other. They totally. all know. So you're only hurting yourself in the future and you're hurting like everyone around you. Yeah. And I know it's because you don't want to appear like a diva and you don't want to disappoint people and you want your career to flourish, but really it's harmful in the long run. Exactly. So, And same with relationships. If you can't set your boundaries now, like you're then never going to be, they're going to take advantage of you. It's going to keep happening. You forgive, let's say your boundary was cheating and the person you're with cheats on you, and then they say, well, I'm so sorry, it was an accident, take me back. If that's truly a boundary and you're like a zero tolerance policy on it, but then you go, oh, that was a mistake and he didn't mean it, and that was like, I've never seen him do that in the past, and so, okay, okay, well, I'll take you back. Now they know that they can push that boundary, yeah, yeah, yeah. that they can get away with that. And as, mu- as shitty as it is, and as much as you wanted that relationship to work out, it's better for you to just walk away and not negotiate that clear cut boundary that was very much clear at the beginning of your relationship. You know why? Because I've done this in real life. Mm. Once you run into your first traffic cone, you kind of want to keep doing it. Mm. It's a boundary that exists. It's there. You're not supposed to do it, but I did it once and it felt and so good. And it got away with good. it? Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. It was kind of funny too. Like you had a little like, ooh, this is taboo. Yeah, like, ooh, I'm a bad boy. Yeah. Ooh, I'm like in Grand Theft Auto right now. And I got away with it. Yeah. Yeah. Again, again, again. 
So then you're fucking flipping 18 of those up off your oh off, off your windshield. Exactly. <laughs> Next thing you know. Yeah. And that's just traffic cones. We're not even talking right. about cheating. So. I totally thought it was a metaphor for the whole time. And then, and then no, no, no he's actually guns. talking about traffic cones. I really am. Yeah. I, hit, I hit one one time and man, did it feel good. Wow. How, how, uh, They're actually made to be How hit. tight was that traffic cone? It was really sick. <laughs> They're made to be hit. They're supposed to get hit. They're all rubbery. Exactly. They're all bendy. Hit one sometime, folks. They're flexible to you hitting them. <laughs> it's true. They're supple. They're uh, they're pouty. <laughs> they're pouty. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, so don't let people uh, renegotiate your boundary for you. No. I feel like that's very... And so when you're speaking up to like it's the hardest part, I think, is um, going back to those already established relationships where you've let people cross that boundary and going back and saying, hey, here's my new boundary. How do you approach that, though? Like, hey, let's have lunch. And then, like, yo, you know how you used to walk all over me? Not anymore, bitch. Well, it's usually a phone call. And also, like, if I'm talking about people that are actively continuing to cross that boundary. Basically, the next time they do that. Okay even though they didn't know that that was your boundary because you've been letting them do that, that's when you take a stand and say, hey, I've been thinking a lot lately. And mm. um, I don't like when you do this. Uh, I don't like give, or, or maybe it's not even you. Maybe you could use a nice statement like, I, I would l- prefer to not help you every single time you need help. Mm. I, I think that it's taking away from my own projects. And um, I understand that I haven't said no in the past, but um, I, I've realized I need to spend more time on my own things. And every time I, you know, put that to the side to help you, it or it ends up hurting me. And so I hope you can understand that. Okay, reasonable. you know, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, a sort but if of, you're a, if you're a, like a five star people pleaser, yeah, that's a hard. Oh, it, that's these, a hard. I'm combo. not saying any of these no, conversations I know, I know. are easy. These this is going to be the hardest part mm-hmm. is reestablishing boundaries in your current relationships the easier part it's not easy but the easier part is that the more you do it the easier it gets Mm -hmm. and so the third step is maintaining this boundary um every new relationship you enter every new decision every um negotiation you walk into you have a clear boundary and you're not going to let people cross that is it bad to be a one-star people pleaser like a I don't think you're doing a very good job at people pleasing. Yeah, you're not very malleable, though, right? Like, like if if I have a friendship with somebody and I'm all terms all the time, like no things, just me. Oh, me, oh, me. oh well, so the sub two when you're speaking up, um, that that part is all about open communication. So someone could be like, oh, well, I, you know, like I really value you as a friend, and part of where I think we bond is, you know, during this part. It's like, oh, okay, well, I will bond with you over set times. You give me, like, for example, I have a problem with this. I don't like when people do last minute plans. It no, bothers me. And I used to just toss everything aside to please them and, and go to their thing, even though it was last minute. And I, I felt completely, I started building resentment for that. And now I have a very clear boundary in my head where, if you if you're doing a last minute thing, I'm not gonna do it. One of the only things in the world that scares me these days uh, is having to come to you with a last minute <laughs> plan that somebody pitched us. Like I know. a last minute party, a last minute, and it sucks any because barbecue. like I'm like oh my god. I, of course I'll make exceptions sometimes if it's depending on the value that it brings me, but it really has to be a valuable thing for me to take a last minute plan. It really has to bring value to my life. Yeah, dude, it's like I have to t- go tell Daenerys Targaryen that her dragon died. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck. Got fuck. turned into but a I have to tell a, you, because if I don't tell you, then- A then, Night King dragon? Yeah, then we're somewhere and they're like, oh, why didn't you come? And then Nikki's like, Steve didn't even tell me. And I'm like, oh, bitch, I, could, I couldn't well, tell I, you. Well, I would like you to tell me. I know, that's what not, I'm saying. It's not your fault. I have to be the messenger. You're the messenger, and yeah. And I get the fucking dragon's <laughs> breath reaction. And I'm like, man. It's not even that so, bad. It and is. Get the dragon's breath is me going, ugh. No, it's not that. <laughs> it's the, it's the, um, it's the, why, why? No, I can't do, I can't do that. And I'm like, okay, it's fine. I was just, I was just pitching it. All right, it's good. Like, it's like that. <laughs> this is what you do to Steve when you ask us for last minute plans. Please stop doing it. I need a day at least. I require a minimum 24 hours in advance of planning because it's not fair. I set my schedule because I need it for my, for my mental health. I really just I need to know 
what my schedule is like. And I can be flexible. I used to be a lot less flexible, but I can be very flexible. But I, I require a minimum 24 hours. I just feel like that's disrespectful if you are a last minute person. It's I just, so funny, though, because for them, they're like, hey, it's Friday. We're not doing anything tonight. Let's call Nick and I Steve. I fucking hate it. And they're like, and Nikki's like, that is so fucking disrespectful. <laughs> like, it is such a violent not- reaction <laughs> to something that is so innocent. But I don't- you're so offended by it. It's great. I, I realize there's a certain level of self-awareness where I realize there's different personality types. Some people love spontaneity. They thrive off it. They think it's so fucking fun. And I... And they think that I'm one of them because to a degree, I like spontaneity if it's within structure. Mm -hmm. So let's say we're going on vacation. I don't like the people that are like, we're doing this, this day, and we're doing this, this, like where they're super, I don't like that at all. I don't like that either. I don't like itineraries like that, but I do like knowing, hey, we're staying at this hotel. Here are some options around us. We'll decide on the day, like what option we want. Then I know like, okay, we're going to see one of these places like on each day. And we're just going to decide like what time fits us that time, you know, like we'll go based on feelings once we're there. Yeah. But I like to at least know in advance what the structure, like the the things that we're seeing is the excursions we're going on, you know, I get so it. That I can I can pla- pack the proper shoes. I can but bring the pop proper skin. But you're a different swimwear. person on vacation. I'm talking about Nikki in real life. No, that's but that's a, it's the same. It's a metaphor or it's analogy. Okay. It's analogous because it's um, I'm not a strict person. I just require like some structure. Mm-hmm. And so I can be spontaneous if we're like, hey, Friday night, we're we're going to party. We don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to hang out. Yeah, you have to have that category. We don't set. know what time it, it's going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm even okay with not knowing what time it's going to be at because I used to be very strict about time too. That's for sure. Because I like to plan my days out. But like, I lo- as long as I know in advance, okay. We're meeting up sometime. We don't know what we're going to do. I can be spontaneous within that structure. But yeah, I really hate the spontaneity of like, we're all meeting up. And that, cause then I get FOMO. I'm like, fuck, like I didn't, I either have to break my own boundaries or I feel like FOMO. It's not the end of the world. I know it's not the end. When I don't. People want to hang. I'm I don't saying. treat it like the end of the world. People out there are going to think that I treat it like the end of the world. She doesn't don't, treat it like the end of the world. Like the world. I'm Thank being you. hyperbolic. Thank you. Hyperbolic. I just think you could be a little bit more flexible. What you think that like? I think that no. I think that the, in what, the way, say it in the tenor in which you. But it's only disagree. to it's only to you. Yeah, I, I don't do that tenor to them. I know you wreck me. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I'm just kidding, everybody. I don't, I don't wreck. It's not that bad. I wreck them to you. I know. <laughs> it's funny. It's just funny. I love it. I wouldn't change a thing about you. It's really, honestly, just part of who you are that makes it all fun. But also, sometimes I'm like, we don't have anything to do today. Let's invite some people. That's over. true. <laughs> yes, true. That's very true. But they don't have the same boundaries. Right. Okay. Fuck those people. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, it's it's a it's a hard space to navigate, but yeah. I feel like um, the more you practice it, the better you get at it. But then there's, I think those are tests. You mm-hmm. know, those are kind of tests. To, is that your boundary? And I I feel like it is. I'm pretty confident that it sends me to a place of high anxiety when someone gives me a last minute plan because I don't want to disappoint them. That's for sure. That's and for I sure. don't want to miss out. But I also already planned on working on this project and the way I structure my time. Now I have to diminish this project yes. in order to cater to it right they just handed you a ticking time bomb i know it really feels <laughs> let's, that let's... way <laughs> <laughs> especially someone that um that has always wanted a social life like I'd, I've, I'd always wanted to have friends and then i put career first for so long um that i it's and then i and then it overcompensated where i was constantly like going out and and going to their last minute plans yeah. at the detriment of my career or like you know certain projects that i had planned for myself and then i start breaking trust with myself is what it is well we have a great natural boundary with our friends anyway because they live so fucking far away from us so it's not like spontaneous plans are that easy yeah because they live like an hour at least away from us usually yeah but do you get that concept too of like when you break trust with yourself like if if i had promised myself i was gonna do a project and then i break it over and over again for other people it kind of it sends a, a signal to your brain that you're you're not as valuable as these other people are and you're abandoning yourself. It's so true. And yeah. It's a bad pattern to establish for yourself. Right. Cuz it, it it does set it sets a precedent 
for how you value yourself in the future. Yeah, or not. Where you're like, well, this future. person's more valuable than me, and you know. Yeah. And here's how I see myself. I rank over here, down here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it was really helpful for me. I feel like I, it's not something that I don't really think that much of anymore because I, um, I think I I did a lot of this work years ago. And um, looking back on how I used to act, I'm like, wow, I can't believe like I had s such a hard time setting certain boundaries. I understand why I had a hard time because it's some shit that they don't tell you. Mm -hmm. No one had sat me down and said, this is how you set boundaries. But I'm glad that I... That you I, found it. Yeah, that we found yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, and then it comes down to like uh, recently, you know, I'd been taken advantage of in business before. And uh, then recently, um, some people I knew were getting taken advantage of, and they didn't know any better. Um, and if I hadn't gone through that and set a clear boundary, then I wouldn't have known better either. But now that I have, I was able to step in and, and help them yes. not get taken advantage of. And that's really what it is for me is like helping other people realize their own value as well. Yeah, like man. And once you have that set, then you can, you can- You have the tools to help them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I love it. Exactly. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Should They Don't Tell You. Hopefully you can stop your people-pleasing bitch ways. Well, yeah, stop being a little right? bitch stop out there. Stop being a little bitch start ass help, start, out there. Hey, start pleasing yourself a little Mark? more. Mark? Mark? <laughs> Fucking Mark? We love you, Mark. We love you, Mark. Uh, no, but stop, yeah, st start pleasing yourself out there, please. Yeah, please yourself. All right. Yeah. Don't give that anal away. Please yourself. Whatever. See you later. Bye. Bye. Share it with your friends. We love you guys. Thanks. And thanks to our Patreons. Bye. Bye.